Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel and today we're going to discuss some uh, basic cooking principles here on our Teaching Tuesday and what today we're going to talk about marinades, brines, cures, and injections. Okay guys I want to discuss this because I um, get a lot of questions about this. A lot of people um, don't understand what uh, marinade, what the difference between a marinade is, the difference between a brine, uh, wet brining, dry brining, um, curing, what it all means, when to do this, when to inject. Um, it's all, it can be confusing, but once you learn the basic principles of what each of these methods are, you can kind of figure it out. Um, first of all, I'm going to reference an article in the description below that um, is actually pretty good in explaining what marinades and brines do on AmazingRibs.com and there's also going to be one on curing and what curing does as well so take a look down that for more detailed information but um, first thing I'm going to talk about here is marinades because a lot of people do that probably more than anything so they'll take you know uh, some kind of salad dressing like this this says it's a salad dressing and marinade um, or this is a moho marinade and what a marinade is it's just a mixture of oil vinegar spices stuff like that that you soak your meat in um, to try to flavorize it to get it to get some more flavor to it one of the things that marinade does do is it will coat the entire surface of the meat that you're marinating it in um, it will not penetrate into the meat whether it be chicken steak pork um, lamb marinade is not something that is going to actually suck up into the meat like a sponge meat is not a sponge no matter what kind of meat it is it won't suck it up into its cells so you won't have moho flavor all the way through the meat if you cut a piece of the meat off and it's an inch thick you bite just into the middle of that if you cut off the outside you won't taste this marinade or this marinade or any kind of marinade because that's not what marinades actually do they coat the surface of the meat some marinades do actually tenderize the meat if you use a lot of vinegar um, sometimes if you use apple cider vinegar in particularly and with chicken or uh, any other kind of protein that's um, you know poultry or fish it can uh, affect the tenderness of the chicken just because the acid will change the the cellular structure of the meat it'll break it down but um, as far as getting the flavor of the marinade deep inside the uh, protein it won't do that so I do like to marinate some things um, but like I said you know I have the impression if I'm going to marinate something it's primarily a outside surface coating um, and there, there's nothing wrong with that because that's a good way to season your meat now if just don't go into it uh, under the impression that you're going to get if you have a two pound pork roast that's you know three inches around like a, a pork loin you're not going to get that marinade flavor deep inside the meat unless you inject it so it's going to primarily season the outside surface of the meat so Okay, moving on let's go into what brines are brines a little bit different than a marinade and there's two types of brines there are dry brines and then there are wet brines wet brines are more associated with um, turkey or chicken you'll see people doing this for Thanksgiving because they'll try what you're trying to do with a brine is you're trying to infuse the meat with moisture so that it doesn't dry out so people will dry pork butts people are brine pork butts they'll brine brisket they'll brine pork loins to try to uh, infuse more moisture into the meat so that when you're cooking it it takes a lot longer for it to dry out so wet brining is, is, is exactly what it sounds like you mix salt and some different spices into water and make sure that that's mixed in real well uh, combined with the water so you're making a, a salt water type uh, basic uh, brine and then you soak that meat in the brine in the refrigerator for 
any number of hours. And then what that'll do is the salt will actually change the molecular structure and it will infuse salt deep and moisture deep into the meat. Usually with brines though, it won't take any of the other flavorings that you put in the brine with it. The other seasonings like garlic or um, pepper, anything like that, and it's all just going to be a surface treatment. The only thing that's actually going to penetrate deep into the meat is going to be the salt and moisture. So that's one thing that people get confused on with, with wet brine or dry brine. Uh, wet brines, um, they're about more uh, you know soaking it in, you know, in the water where you have to actually put a bunch of salt into the water to try to figure out how much salt you want to uh, brine your your chicken or your poultry or your meat with dry brines are a little bit different they, they are exactly how they sound and you're just using a basic rub um, you can use it with barbecue rub um, salt pepper garlic uh, a lot of people will brine with just this or you know any kind of barbecue rub that has salt in it um, you're just rubbing it on the outside of the meat but what happens is once that salt and water mixed and moisture mixed together it will actually go back into the steak because the salt will change the um, cellular structure of that moisture and it will actually draw back into the protein so what ends up happening is same way with wet brining your moisture it will draw more moisture into or let it retain more moisture into the protein salt will actually hold on to moisture when it's in the protein so although you're not soaking it in water trying to get more water into it you're actually helping it retain the water by adding salt into the protein so that's how brines work now curing is a little bit different um, it's the same type of philosophy as a wine but what you're trying to do with curing is you're trying to actually um, change it to where it's a little bit more preserved where like with bacon or ham you can actually after you're done curing bacon or ham you can actually let it sit out for a while and not have to worry about it uh, you know rotting <laughs> because it's actually preserved and that's when you add this something either the pink uh, pink salt or something like this this is called tender quick which is actually it's a it's a different kind of salt it's a it's a nitrite sodium sodium nitrite instead of nitrate which is regular salt is sodium nitrate this is sodium nitrite and this is a lot more powerful than this kind of salt and what this will do is actually change the uh, cellular structure of the meat and help preserve it so that's why you get that pink uh, look on bacon and ham so it looks totally different than if you just brined a chicken you can actually get a different color when you use a nitrite so um, and that's it now let's talk about injection uh, injecting marinades or spices into meats um, you can actually buy you know one of these type of injectors on uh, Amazon or eBay or what have you at your local store and what they do is actually you get um, a couple different um, needles with it you can take some of your inject your um, marinade and actually inject that into your meat uh, deep down into it and this is how you get some of that flavor from your marinades into your meat since something like this is not going to penetrate deep into the uh, to the meat you go ahead and you inject it that's why a lot of people will do both they'll actually brine their chicken or turkey or poultry and then they'll actually inject it as well because this will get more flavor down deep into the meat because you're actually putting the the actual marinade deep into the meat so you can get these for 10 20 bucks on amazon so they're pretty pretty easy to use self-explanatory the only thing you don't want to use when you're doing um something with an injector you don't want to use any like big herbs or chunks of um, spices you want to make sure all your spices are actually diluted in the water so that they don't clog up your whole I usually will use something yeah. like um, chicken broth if I'm doing a turkey I'll use chicken broth maybe a little orange juice or lemon juice with some garlic um, stuff like that garlic onion maybe a little salt um, mix it up some you know put a little paprika in there but like I said, just make sure everything that you do use when you're injecting will actually 
be diluted, diluted into the water and mixed in real well so that you're not um, clogging up the holes of the injector. So that's all I have about marinades, brines, injections, and cures. Like I said, check out the articles down below. They'll actually go into a lot more detail, but um, that's pretty much the basic information on that. I hope it helped you guys. Make sure you like this video, subscribe. I'll be doing more of these Teaching Tuesday um, little videos uh, every, every uh, Tuesday for the next month or so. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and comment below. If you have anything that you want me to cover in these videos, comment below. Find us on our Facebook group, Facebook page, and make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.